Member was chairman governing council Asian Confluence in the form of Member Northeastern Council. His Excellency Saurabh Kumar, Ambassador of India to Myanmar. His Excellency Mr. Mao Kyu Ong, Ambassador of Republic of Union of Myanmar to India. And Mr. R. K. Ranjan Singh, Member of Parliament Lok Sabha. I am indeed delighted to deliver the keynote address at this Brahmaputra IORD conversation organized by the Asian Confluence in collaboration with the Asian Indian Center, New Delhi, the, the, the Mandalay Forum for East Asian Students, Myanmar, and Manipur University, and the, the title Indo Myanmar Cooperation, a Vibrant and Prosperous Border Zone. I'm very happy to say that I had an opportunity to visit Myanmar and I travel up to Mandalay. The ambassador, Indian ambassador, Mr. Bhaskar Mitra, when he was there, is a good, great friend. And on his personal invitation, me and my daughter, we traveled to Myanmar. And my visit was most informative, very interesting. And I learned a lot during those, those few days that I was in Myanmar. Myanmar and India shared a long geographical border and shared heritage. In addition, Brahmaputra River, the symbol of the life and people of the northeastern state of India, and the Ayurveda River largely shaped the culture, livelihood for the people of Myanmar. Both regions are primarily agrarian economies having immense biodiversity, natural beauty, rich cultural heritage, and ample water resources. Connectivity projects are also being implemented, such as India, Myanmar, Thailand, Thailand Trilateral Highway, Kaladan Multimodal Transit Transport Project, Irrigation Electricity Development, health, education, and many other socio-economic projects. Overland connectivity between India and Myanmar and the rest of the ASEAN countries through Myanmar has been discussed for over two decades now. Action on the ground has, however, been delayed due to various factors including difficult terrain lack of adequate commercial interest and need for large financial resources and adverse security situation with attend risk. Recent years have been fresh initiative being taken by India in close cooperation with Myanmar. The Kaladan Multimodal Transit Transport Project, whose implementation began in 2010 is making progress. The Tumu Kalia Kaliwa Road in Myanmar, built by India in 2001, is now in the process of becoming a part of the trilateral highway between India, Myanmar, and Thailand. Other, after the remaining section under construction or upgradation get completed. Connectivity between Mizoram state and Myanmar will get a boost after the construction of the Thai Tedam road in Myanmar, which India has agreed to undertake. Prospects also appear better for railway connectivity between the two countries. Once railway connectivity between the two countries, once the railway on the Indian side gets expanded, to India-Myanmar border on which work is underway. Several interrelated aspects assume importance now. First is the timely completion of all these projects. Second is the need for transforming these connectivity corridors into development corridors with thriving trade investment and other commercial activities for mutual benefit. Supportive infrastructure for supply of power, communication, and IT links, and creation of capacities for skill development and training are essential. Putting in place 
efficient border trade transaction arrangement would also be very important. Additionally, further strengthening of the inland connectivity within India and within Myanmar would help with the benefits and participation. India Look East policy represents its efforts to cultivate extensive economic and strategic relations with the nation of Southeast Asia in order to bolster its standing as a regional power and as a counterweight to the strategic influence of the People's Republic of China. Initiated in 1991, it marked a strategic shift in India's perspective of the world. It was developed and enacted during the government of Prime Minister Shri P. V. Narasimharao and rigorously persuaded by the successive administration of Shri Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Dr. Manmohan Singh. Shri Nandin Modi Ji, Honorable Prime Minister, accorded high priority to India turn East look into East Act policy. However, during the 11th plan period, Manipur has not been benefited. Nevertheless, some important initiative made by the government of Manipur and central government ministry of donor are highlighted in short. Introduction of bus service between Imphal and Mantle in Myanmar at least once a week during winter and non rainy season. Concerned ministry is already conveyed in principal approval. At the instance of the Ministry of Donor, it is proposed to revive border trade along Indo-Myanmar border in three locations, one in each border district, Chandel, Ukrul, and Churachanpur, have been identified by state government for establishment of border hearts in Manipur. 40 items are permitted for border trade between India and Myanmar. In addition, government of Manipur had already submitted proposal for increasing another 15 more items under border trade for consideration in India-Myanmar JTC meeting. Introduction of rupee kaya trade as permitted on the Indo-Nepal and Indo-Bhutan border in order to facilitate former border trade between India and Myanmar. Land customs station already exists at Moray. Integrated check post at Moray is being developed under phase one program of the D Department of Border Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, and has to be expedited completion. IT and telecommunication, improving telecommunication network by installing optical fiber link for six kilometers between Moray and the Tamu near at Myanmar. As far as education sector is concerned, Manipur University is teaching Burmese and Japanese language in its lingua in its language school such as program of teaching and learning of languages of the Southeast Asia and other neighboring countries among our youth, professionals and businessmen is perhaps one of the programs action plan to be implemented under India's Look East policy. Manipur University has even opened a center for Myanmar studies in the year 2005. Higher Education Department is making an humble attempt to introduce Myanmar's language as an el elective subject in More College border town of Manipur near Myanmar. Apart from the points stated above, I would like to make a mention about the tour tourism for the Northeast region. Tourism is the fast track for socioeconomic development the world over. Its multiplier effect in employment generation is unmatched. It is vital role is poverty elevation and economic growth is well recognized. The state of Northeast region are blessed with nature's bounty.
the wooded mountains, the deep gorges with winding rivers, rolling hills, and lush green valleys are an intricate picture of scenic beauty. The region is treasure house of biodiversity, flora, and fauna. The colorful and rich heritage add to the beauty of the picturesque surrounding. In other words, it is paradise unexplored, an ideal distinction for the tourist domestic and both international. The tremendous potential for tourism in this region needs to be exploited for the economic growth and prosperity of the people. I'm very happy the different contribution by Indian ambassador to Myanmar and the Myanmar ambassador to India and Mr. R. Kiranjan was very useful. And I'm sure the discussion taking place by the different panelists and participants will add to our knowledge of how other areas can be explored for Indo-Myanmar cooperation for future generations to come. I thank you very much, Jayan.